On today's video, my dad's going to show you guys where all the steaks come from on a hind quarter of venison. Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors and in today's video my dad's gonna bone out a hind quarter, show you guys where the steaks come from, show you guys where the grind and the stew meat kind of comes from and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna compare it to the one leg that's not done so you guys will get a little better idea exactly what cuts come from where on the hind quarter. We'll go ahead and start by right down here by this shank section there's one bone that runs up into here to the kneecap. We'll just go ahead and pop that out and keep all the all the meat intact so we can put it back together later for you. Come right up into here and there's a socket. This is the hind shank. Just set that over here. Mm -hmm. That's the bone and this came is out. basically all shank meat from about this point to where you broke that socket. So set the shank meat right over here. Mm -hmm. And that uh, I mean we'll come back to that and explain it, but that's probably grind or maybe yeah. stew meat, maybe yeah. for canning. That would be best for grind. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that particular meat. So next. Like I say, there's one of the three bones we're going to be taking out. The second bone is the femur bone, which runs right straight up to where you see this hip bone part here. And on the side facing me is where your sirloin tip is. So that's what we're going to take out right now. You can take it out a couple of different ways. I'll show you maybe the easiest way. Right here is where the kneecap. You'll see where there's a kneecap here. Yep. And... Uh, <coughs> If you loosen that kneecap and uh, pull it out a little bit, like this, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and get your knife into there and you're going to hit that femur bone that runs straight down. So we'll take and run it right straight down to here and about right even with this hip bone here, we'll go ahead and take it off. And that is a sirloin tip. All right. The only thing left in there is one bone. I didn't even mention that's part of the three bones, but you take that off and square this up. You have a hook, fine. Otherwise, use your fingers. There's a little bit of a cap on here. And you can uh, get that off of there doesn't amount to too much. I just always like to get it off because it's a little sloppy and you don't need it on. Then you've got a solid piece of meat when you're done to cut into steaks or whatever. Mm -hmm. You want to straighten this face off a little bit. That is a sirloin tip. Boneless sirloin tip. Okay. After doing that probably like to take out this big hip bone section and uh, some people will cut it with the saw there and take it out in two pieces I just leave mine whole but there's a socket right in here where you went and took that mm -hmm. yep. it's a socket right there yep. and then there's the rest of the hip bone that runs along that socket and you just want to get in behind it with your knife kind of shallow and feel it out Kind of goes pretty straight for a bit. You can come back and you'll be able to get to see more and more of it as you open up this socket here. Mm -hmm. sure. And then uh, 
Your next uh, stroke can be a little deeper. Goes back to a little point back there that you go around. Steeper there. Now, you can come over onto this side. You can see where that bone ends. It runs right down along here. Mm -hmm. So you get underneath where that socket was. Get the tip of your knife underneath that pelvic bone. Just keep running it several times until you get it right back to where this tail is. Uh -huh, and sure. then uh, you'll hit the tail bone down in here and it will come right off. And that is yeah, that is your hip bone. Okay. So, uh, now with that off, there's a little bit of a knob of a bone that comes out here a little ways. So probably about right here, you can take your knife and make a good square cut off of there. This is sort of actually what would be called your top sirloin. And uh, it's a good steak. It's not a real great big piece of meat. But it has a seam in it that I usually take out. Because it's much easier to cut your steaks if you don't have another piece flipping around on there. Mm -hmm. So this is your top sirloin. Now we have it down to our right down to the full center round. Top round, bottom round, femur bone. Mm -hmm. We're going to remove the femur bone, separate the top from the bottom, which is quite easy to do. Once you get it opened up, you'll see a natural seam in there. When it's sitting like this, your bottom has the most fat on it, and the top is where things were split apart. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the inside when, of the yeah, leg. When eh? you were, yeah, when you were field dressing it down around that groin area, the top is the part that was to the inside of all that. Mm -hmm. So okay. now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get this femur bone out of there. Uh, in some places that cut it, uh, process things with a saw, they would take this on the saw and cut just big full cut round stakes out of them. Yeah. But this is a decent enough animal where you can take the bone out. Most people do like it boneless. Oh yeah. And you'll get uh, two sections of nice steak. So that's what we'll do. We'll take We'll just come down, ride the top of this bone, kind of shallow, and you'll be able to pull back on the meat a little bit, and then drop down into the back of it, come back around this shank area, come back up here. You'll have to go a couple, two or three times, just real shallow, and you'll get to where you start to see the bone will start loosening up for you. Mm -hmm. You're just cutting right around that whole thing, basically. Yeah, right yeah. around that whole bone. Yep. And then you go up in here where that socket was. And there's a little bit of the bone that runs into this meat. And that's it. And this is your femur bone. Mm -hmm. Now, as I was saying, you'll find some natural seam in here. So where that femur bone was sitting, like when you were taking it out, open this up a little. And you'll start to see where there's a little bit of a white tissue there. You hit it with your knife, just the tip of your knife, and you'll see how it starts coming apart following following this natural seam. And you come down to this end and you can take it off. Mm -hmm. And this is your full top round. Mm -hmm. Now, while this is here, you'll find that there's a little little piece of meat along the side here. I just always take it off. And there is some pretty meat there. It's good meat for grind. Mm -hmm. A little of this off. And back in here, there's just a tiny piece of shank meat that's kind of in a pouch back here on this here chunk of fat mm -hmm. that holds the gland. The hind quarter gland in it. Okay. And uh, we'll just remove that. And uh, this is a little rough up here. We'll just go ahead and take this off. We'll be going over this for trim later. So now what you have here is your bottom round with eye round intact. Some people say, well, I like the eye around. Well, you can take this eye around off if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, right there. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, why don't we? Should we take it off? Yeah. Okay. We'll go ahead and remove the eye around as long as we're right here by it. It again is in a natural seam. You can start to see it if you just slowly go with your knife a little bit. And this is the eye around. Mm -hmm. Then there's a little fat down along here. You may as well take off, square it off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Get a little meat off it later. There's a chunk of silver on this side that you want to get off. It would uh, make life a little easier when you're eating your steaks. Right. So uh, I'll just go ahead and come down along here and get that uh, little bit of silver off of there. As I've said before in some of your videos, this is the stuff that will make your steak curl right up. Yeah. And so this is your full bottom round. Mm-hmm. That you can make nice little petite steaks out of this. Yeah. Your eye round, which you may want to put with your little butt tenderloins. Yeah. And fry sure. that up on the grill. Sure. We'll go ahead and remove this little bit of... Uh, that there. Don't mm -hmm. need that. Yeah, you roll this around on the grill with those pieces of tenderloin mm -hmm. and you've got some good eating. Bottom round. Top sirloin. Sirloin tip. Mm -hmm. Top round, we're going to go ahead and clean this up. This is where we took that hip bone out. It's a little little scruffy along there. We're going to go ahead and square it off mm -hmm. a little bit. And if you'll notice over here there is a pretty big artery there, but there's also a piece of meat that lays in a seam there. And uh, when you take that off right there, you can kind of see where it lays in there. And actually, I go ahead right around to the top part, and it connects to a little slight bit of cap meat up here. That is also, it's just a continuation of that seam. I usually take that off sure. and expose the top round. We'll uh, take out any fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just just generally clean it up, eh? Yep, that's it. Just, just get it so just it looks clean like it up. So every steak you cut off there, you don't have to trim or nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it's already trimmed, nice in its whole state right here. So there we are. All right. So going back to what we just did, to sum it all up, this is what we started with. We took off the shank. This is shank meat. It's good for nothing more than grind or possibly stew, which this is. Stew or canning. Yeah, and we yeah. Uh, we generally do the hamburger with it. Right. right. Yep. Right. Okay. And then uh, after the shank was removed, we kind of went over here and took that sirloin tip out, mm -hmm. which is this right here. All right. We popped it out of that leg, took that off. This bone was removed. And then we came up here and worked out our big hip bone after the shank was removed off of it. Worked that hip bone out, came underneath it up out this way, and there's a pretty good morsel of meat underneath here. Mm, that's right underneath that, it's yeah. It's right underneath here. Okay. Comes out, and it's, you can get a few steaks out of it, and they are good steaks. They're, they're top sirloin. That's what they are, which is a pretty pretty respectable steak oh, yeah. in the grocery store. Okay, after that was removed and this top sirloin was taken off, we all we had left was taking the femur bone out, that one center bone, and opening it up, our top and our bottom round was like this, with the eye around in there. I, I removed the eye around for those of you that want to do that. This is your bottom round and your top round. All steak material here. Mm -hmm. These uh, four pieces make you some nice steaks. All right. And that's what mm -hmm. that's what we're going to turn this one into also. So yep. we're going to double everything we got here. When this yeah. one's done. anything that I did wrong, just tell me, Marie. <laughs> you got her down pat now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we had to uh, we had to have the huntress do a little cutting. Hey, Dad. Oh, you better believe it. Mm -hmm. The fruit of the hunt. Mm -hmm. oh. Yep, there you go. With authority. With thin. authority. That's the way to do it. And it doesn't matter whatever thickness you want. I'll just have to cook that one a little quicker. Yeah, or less fry. time. Nice job. Thanks.
it's, if I guess it doesn't matter how you cook it, it can be thick or thin, but the thicker ones, you can leave them pink in the middle, and that helps keep your steak a little more tender. Okay. Right. So that's a lot of nice steaks off those hind quarters of your deer. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. And hope that uh, helps you guys out a little bit. But uh, anyways, hey guys, remember to hunt fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter, along with Don Knetter for Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.